Okay, now the objective of my next task here is to use this um, gross gain <coughs> to create a loop, a channel, so to speak, for a cord to run through to draw this up tight. And I'm going to run this. I picked my good side first because my other side's a real mess, and I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. They didn't come out even at the end. Oops. To do this, I'm going to run this stitch down here on one side, all the way down, and then I'm going to flip it over and run a second stitch all the way down, hopefully staying as close to this edge as I can. I'm going to slow it really down because I found out that I was going really all over the place. And at the first stitch I'm going to do, because I want to try and get on the fabric as tight as possible, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the second stitch. And I have to think about if I'm going to put it on the outside or inside here, because I haven't flipped this inside out yet. So let me figure that out. I'll get started, and I'll get back to you guys. See if I have you guys in the right spot here. Probably not. Not at all. Okay, so this is going pretty good. Um, I shouldn't have said that, because now I've jinxed myself. But really, it is going pretty good. i got a couple of bubbles underneath here. But like I said, I don't really care about that so much. I just want to stay on this very lip of this edge here so I can get a strength there when it's all said and done. And so far, it's going pretty well, but we'll see. I've got this bubble starting here, so now I've probably messed up and jinxed myself. So I ran off. i got to go back. That doesn't work. So like I said, I was doing really good until I jinxed myself. I'm going to try and get this back to working in the right order. I'll show you guys a little more later. Well, it didn't come together. I guess the material was stretching. I even had an extra three inches on there. But I guess it was stretching as it went around. And then I ended up about four inches short. So I think that's not going to be a problem. Because this is all going to bunch up at the end down here. So I don't think that little gap's going to matter. Uh, well, at least I hope not. Because I don't have a choice at this point. It's already done. And I'm not going to try and fabric in another piece. So now I have to do the second loop, come back and put a second loop in it to try and make a hole for the uh, thread to go through. But I'm thinking I should probably put my rope in there before I stitch it down. I'm not sure if I'll be able to feed it through otherwise afterwards. Again, if I stitch the rope on accident, then I got a real problem. So now I got to try and figure that out and what I'm going to do there. All right, I've given this a little thought. I'm not sure where to go with it. Remember I said I wasn't going to put that extra piece in there? Well, I went ahead and did it because I was afraid that if I didn't go all around, I wouldn't have the, I, I'd end up tearing something. So I went ahead and put that extra piece in I said I wasn't going to put in. So it's there. But now I'm getting ready to make my loop for my shock cord to go in. And um, just for anybody else doing this, I bought... 7 8 inch gross grain. Buy a bigger gross grain. This is way too thin once you fold it over on itself. There's just not a lot of room there. I'm trying to decide if I want to get crazy here and do a double layer of gross grain to give myself a little more room or if I want to take a chance and fold it over here and stitch and give myself, it will literally be once that stitch is in there, I'll have less than a quarter inch of space here. So there's no room for error on the stitching. Although I am getting better. My stitches are right on the edge. But I don't know that I'll be able to run shot cord through this after the fact. But I can't stitch it with it in there. I thought about this, and there's no way to stitch it with it in there. Because if it's in there, and you fold this over, and you put it underneath the foot here, and you put the foot down on it, the foot would have to sit on the rope, or the uh, shock cord, causing it to have uh, no tension on both sides of the feet. And I think it would then turn too fast. So I can't do it with the shock cord in, so I have to stitch it without the shock cord and add it later. But I'm not going to have a lot of thickness. I'm going to have to use like a coat hanger and literally, hopefully, be able to get through this whole thing and then pull it through or something. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stitch it, because there's no way to stitch it with the shock cord in. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it, and if I don't like it, there's always seam rippers, and I'll start over. And then I'll seam rip it and come back and do, if, if need be, 
do two layers of gross grain and stitch the outer edges of it and then I'll have lots of room in between. I should have bought twice as thick of gross grain and given myself a little more room on the ends. Um, yeah, weight wise it's a little more but I'm going to have to double it up possibly anyway. So That's where I'm at right now. I'm going to try and stitch a little of this and just see how close it gets and how it looks. If I get two inches in and I don't like it, I'll stop, get out my seam rippers, and get a fresh start. So that's where I'm at right now. All right, so, oh, I'm sorry. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So I uh, played with it a little more, and I was able to get a pretty good seam with just one layer of this uh, material folded over. I think I'll be fine. It's a pretty tight seam. I have about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less than that. And I, where I tied my thing together, I may run into some trouble here where I cut early. But what I think I'll do is I'll start this direction and go around and make this my finishing point. That way if I have trouble, I can always just unstitch this last part here. But it got pretty good all the way around. I had a couple areas where I backtracked and I got a little tight up here. Um, so now, I actually caught the net in a loop there, a few places, but I don't think it's going to matter. It's not letting any bugs in. It's not bothering anything. It's just hanging on the ground. So I went right across the bottom there, no problem. Did really good. I only had two spots. Where was the other one at? Oh, right here. Right. No, not right there. Uh, I had another spot where I had to back up and go forward again because I messed up. I don't know where it's at right now. And then when I done the end here, I didn't know what to do. So I just didn't stitch the end shut. I went outside of it and came back up to lock it off. But this whole end right here is not stitched shut so that the cord can go in and out and I can have a little pull thing right here. I probably wish I had closed off each side and zipped it over. I may still cut this and cut this and then put some stitches across it. Just so, well I can't put stitches across it because it'll close it, but I gotta come up with something. This looks a little open and frazzled and I'm afraid it'll all just unravel right here, but that's my mess of an end where I first started. This side is going to come out 100% better because it's my second time in. So, here's my fabric, my uh, tool fabric, and my gross, gross, gross game. I cannot remember the name of that for the life of me. I was in the fabric store and I kept saying that I wanted the gross game. I wasn't sure if I was saying that or if I was saying the thing that was supposed to be or what. But the lady's like, uh, you mean this stuff? And she gave it to me. I'm like, that's exactly it. Anyways, so now I'm going to run this down here just like I did the other side. Do it all the way around. Fold it over. Double it up. And I've triple checked. This is the top. Not the other side down here. So that I don't accidentally leave my gap at the top of one and the bottom of the other. So we're going to do this now. We'll show you how it looks when that's all done. And then we'll run our cord through and try it on the hammock. You know what they say about measure twice, cut once? Well, I had only so much of this stuff left and just figured I was going to go around and see where I ended up at because I didn't want to open another whole thing of it. And um, that's pretty close. I'm just going to pull them together and stitch them over each other because I got lucky. I got real lucky <laughs> that I didn't end up way down here somewhere because I was not even watching. And this stuff kind of, this uh, tool stretches as you're running it through. So you really need a lot of extra on this than you do on this. It just gives a lot as you go through the sewing machine. This stuff doesn't give the gross gain, but the tool just gives and it stretches as you're going. And if you hold on to it too much, you pull it back. So even though it looked like I may have had more to start with, I didn't have nearly extra. I just missed it by that much. So I'm just going to sew the other. Alright, I've only got two minutes left on this card. So that means I've made a lot of recording just for this net. But I'm going to do it again. Same as I did on this side, I'm going to flip this over and stitch it down and go all the way around like that to create my um, traveling spot for my elastic cord to go in. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show it. I don't have to show it on the other end, but I'm going to do that. And then we're going to uh, run the cord through. So I just want to tell you what I'm doing on this end. I got this all stitched onto the tool, and now I'm just going to fold it over and stitch it down to create the uh, tunnel for the line to go through. Get back to you in a little bit.